If you're someone who enjoys going to live music events, nothing is more exciting than festival lineup announcements, okay? And what could be better than a festival lineup announcement other than a festival lineup announcement that is stacked, that hypes up the entire nation, okay? That is a wonderful occurrence when that happens. And one recently just happened a couple days ago, a whole lineup announcement for a three-day festival happening in September at the tail end of festival season. We're talking about Furnace Fest. And when I first saw this poster, I laughed out loud. I literally lolled because it was so funny. But every band was posting this flyer, every record label was posting this flyer, and it was hyping up every single person. Right away, people came from north and west and east and south to make travel arrangements to get themselves to Furnace Fest. Because it seemed like if you're into alternative music, if you're into punk rock music and hardcore music, this festival was going to have a little bit of everything for you, plus a couple of huge returns. Historic moments, potentially. Hey ladies, how's it going? It's your friendly neighborhood gatekeeper, Dan Frampton here, and today I'm gonna go through this flyer and tell you why I found it so funny. I know most people that saw this got hyped and they didn't necessarily laugh, and if they were laughing, it was out of hysteria and excitement, but we're just gonna pull it up and we're gonna go line by line and see why this thing is so funny. So first, this thing is happening in Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> that is funny right away. And it's great because it's not in one of like the hubs of punk rock and hardcore, okay? It's not going to have that whole tribalistic type vibe, I don't think. I think Birmingham is actually a great spot for a festival like this. It means everybody kind of has to travel to it if they want to see it. And everybody is going to travel to this thing because it looks insanely good. Now it is a three-day festival over the course of a weekend. And the first funny thing that jumps out to me about this poster is the fact that MXPX is headlining the entire thing. But that's a little bit of a fallacy, okay? But since Friday is the first day, it puts MXPX right there at the top. That is so funny. Who's going there to see MXPX? Really? <laughs> okay. Well, who am I to judge? MXPX, pretty good band. But other than that, the next band on this list is Hatebreed. <laughs> so you got MXPX and then followed by Hatebreed. You're like, okay, I guess you're going all over the place. I can dig that. And then the other two bands on this line, Amberlynn and Reliant K, totally makes sense with MXPX. So it gives me that like, one of these things is not like the other type vibes. I'm in Sesame Street over here reading this poster. And then going through all the bands on night one, you got a band like Knuckle Puck and then a band like Norma Jean. It's the entire spectrum. It's insane. I love to see it. And then Saturday, it turns out that Turnstile is headlining the thing, which I think might be the actual headline of the entire show because it's Saturday. It's right in the middle. It's the perfect day for everybody to be around. Nobody will have to be somewhere the next day. I think that this is the main day of Furnace Fest because you got the most hype band in the world out here. You got Turnstile, which it is kind of cool to see Turnstile out there still doing the festival runs or whatever, but I would love to see how many crop tops and how many Louis Vuitton bags they bring with them on stage up here. And then the mid card over here looks totally awful. Head Automatica, okay, whatever. Thursday, okay, sure, I guess. Say Yosin and Enter Shikari? I don't know, man. I'm not really into all that. But the undercard of Night 2 looks amazing. Look at all this. Anxious. Drain. Gorilla Biscuits. Okay, we got Gorilla Biscuits. I would travel all this way and pay all this money to see Gorilla Biscuits playing amongst all these other bands. That's amazing. You're seeing lots of old timers, lots of new timers, lots of greenhorns, and lots of experience. It really is a melting pot of everything that's going on in the scene today, and I think that that is just truly special. So yeah, sure, I'm out here having a couple giggles, but I do realize how sick this is. And then you got bands like Mind Force. Scowl, Terror, and then Youth of Today. Okay, Youth of Today is coming back. And the next band on this list, next to Youth of Today, is Zao. It goes, Youth of Today, <laughs> Zao, Zulu. <laughs> it's like, all right, pretty good. I do realize that this is a little bit alphabetical, okay? But to see these bands in this order is kind of funny. But then the next line here is just something that I don't think I will ever be able to process. Bane and Pennywise co-headlining night three. What the absolute hell. It was earlier on this year that Bane started like uploading these cryptic posts to their Instagram page. 
First, they deleted all their photos, and we were like, okay, they're up to something. And then one day, they uploaded a letter B, and then the next day, they uploaded a letter A, and then they got to N. And then they were like, hey, we're doing a couple shows. And it was like, oh, cool, you're doing like hometown shows. That's going to be pretty hype. And then it comes out that Bane is absolutely playing the last night in the most hype spot over here on Furnace Fest. This is incredible. I cannot wait to see the footage from this. And then the next line really has between the buried and me and bouncing soul side by side. Do these like fan groups have like uh, a Venn diagram that overlaps whatsoever? I don't think that that's true. Day two looks like the most well-rounded day. Like if you were to go to one day out of all of them, this would be the day to go to. But my personal favorite looking day is this one over here, Sunday, because Bane is back and Bane is like one of my favorite bands and it is kind of embarrassing sometimes because I'll be listening to Bane and someone will be like, I didn't know you were Posse Core. I didn't know you were a straight edge boy. I didn't know you were a youth of today, youth crew type guy. And like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really. They, they just make amazing music and I, I like getting, I like getting hyped and I like shouting and stuff and they're just really good, okay? Get off my back. <laughs> now I don't think Bane is necessarily a straight edge band anymore, but if you want a straight edge band on that day, that Sunday, you can see Inclination in all their straight edge glory. The next line down here has It Dies Today, Judge, and Military Gun all back to back to back. Okay, so if you want to be posy, you can see Gorilla Biscuits on day two, but if you want to be very militant and negative, you can see Judge on night three. It's amazing. It has something for absolutely everybody. I predict so many parking lot brawls, okay? I never heard this band over here taking meds, but that is a great band name. I gotta check them out after this. So all of that information hitting my eyes and my brain all at once was enough to make me literally laugh out loud. An L L O L. But yeah, that's pretty much the sickest looking festival that can even possibly exist. You can go to this thing and see Bane Youth of Today, Gorilla Biscuits, and Judge. <laughs> it's amazing. And you get to go home and sleep early on night two because you don't want to see Turnstile. It's beautiful. A full night's rest on Saturday so then you could fully enjoy Bane on day three. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until my next upload, you can watch another upload.